Good morning, brethren. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Um, just, uh, I was up a little later than normal. Um, and this morning, I, I want to share something with you. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ezekiel, chapter 7. Ezekiel, chapter 7. <clears throat> Ezekiel, chapter 7. Nor, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end. The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Very quickly, this is written unto the Jewish people. This is a different dispensation. Okay? Doctrinally, this is not for us. Okay? We have to remember that. Amen? Yes? Okay? But, for our instruction in righteousness right now, right now, right now, let's continue. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. The church of the living God is going to be caught up very soon, resurrected. And once we are taken out of the way, now you got to remember, that the Lord God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Comforter, is omnipresent. He is, he's omnipresent, okay? He will not, he, he's not going to be gone from the earth. But he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, okay? God is omnipresent. He isn't going anywhere. He will turn his eyes away from things, yes, but he ain't going anywhere. We, the church of the, of the living God, who are of his bones and of his flesh, once we get taken out of the way, all hell's going to break loose. Okay? We know that. And what is coming, which is right at the doorstep, is God's wrath and judgment upon this earth for seven years. And we are very quickly leading up onto that time. But right now, we have to remember, brethren, this is the beginning stages. These are the birth pangs, so to speak, okay? Let's continue. Thus saith the Lord God, an evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it has come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. <clears throat> now doctrinally, dispensationally, this is not written unto us, but it shews unto us that God is a God of judgment, a God of recompense. And this, 
He is doing upon the apple of his eye. Okay? The Jewish people. Okay? And do you think for one moment, for one millisecond, that if our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, would exact this upon his own people that we are going to escape, hmm? that we are going to escape these kinds of things right now. We have the Church of the Living God, yes, yes. We are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now as we speak. If we die today, we are absent from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. And we, the Church of the Living God, we are going to escape before things get really bad. But right now, brethren, we are going through some things, aren't we? Aren't we? Look, and here in America, with the, what, what, what was it? Over 720 million abortions throughout our history or something like that? And now, the lockdowns are returning. People are going to be stuck in their houses again. Going to be defiled through the media. We knew this was coming, brethren. Okay? We knew this was coming. Let's read verse 8. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abomination. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it has come. The morning is gone forth, the rod hath budded, hath blossomed. Pride hath budded. Pride. Brethren, the, the, these people who are not of the Church of the Living God and those who call themselves Christians and they expose themselves for what they truly are. Pride hath budded. Pride. These people are their own God. And in them thinking themselves as gods, they are serving their father, the devil, the little g-god of this earth. Woe be unto them. Woe be unto them. The pride that is rife among many nations, among many peoples, We knew this was coming. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Hello. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any other, nor of any theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come. The day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Here in America, our nation is crumbling right before our very eyes. We're seeing it. Those of you with the Church of the Living God, we have it written for us. Okay? We knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. It's just a matter of time. And whence the selection comes and the Jesuits put in, whom they will put in for the destruction of this nation, whether it be Trump or whether it be Biden, an end has come. 
especially here in America, we're going down, brethren. And those of you of other nations, you see this and you know this too. Pray for the Church of the Living God here in America. Please, pray for us, your brethren, your sisters in America. The time has come, verse 12, the day draweth near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. There's going to come a famine here in America, I believe. I truly believe that. And the pestilence. When you do, are deprived of food and into and drawn into starvation, that weakens your immune system. That weakens your body. Okay? And that makes you more successful, um, more likely, excuse me, to get sick. And once they turn up the 5G and start pumping that stuff out, a lot of people are going to start getting sicker and sicker. Yeah. Yeah. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys. All of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon their heads. They shall cast their silver to the streets, in the streets, excuse me, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. In the book of James, it says that your, um, what is it? Your gold and silver is cankered and your garments are moth-eaten. Okay? There are those out there who are thinking that gold and silver is going to be their refuge when the uh, inevitable collapse of the financial systems come. But you got to remember who's in control, Antichrist, through the Jesuits, okay? The things of this world are not going to help you. The things of this world are not going to save you. We knew Brethren, this was coming. <clears throat> As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of strangers for prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robber shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Referencing Jerusalem. But for our instruction in righteousness, <laughs> the land is full of bloody crimes, 
and the city is full of violence? My countrymen, you watch. You watch. The selection that's coming. I personally believe that is going to be the trigger event, at least here for our nation. You watch. You watch. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way. And according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. The catastrophe, the destruction that is coming upon all nations is going to be so devastating, so severe, that these people, brethren, are going to have no choice but to at least consider that this is using their jargon, that this is a supernatural occurrence. But what about us? Before we are resurrected, taken out of the way, what about us? Go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 1. Again, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is not for us. This is specifically written on to the Jews. In a different dispensation, where eternal security was not there. The people under the dispensation of the law, under the Old Testament, were not sealed unto the day of redemption as we are today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? But, for our instruction and in righteousness, which we need very, very, very much right now, Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. 
And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Pride has budded. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north, and evil shall break forth upon all inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. Again, doctrinally and dispensationally for the Jews. But think about this. The Jesuits, Satan's military army, are just waiting. They're right there on the edge, just ready to come in and pounce. The destruction of America is coming very quickly. And also of many other nations on God's flat earth. Okay? Many nations are, going, are soon going to be falling. Once we get out of here, we, the Church of the Living God, are that are being used of the Lord, holding back, withholding, letting. Once we, the true Church of the Living God, are gone, like a flood. We knew this was coming, brethren. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forgotten, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. Thou, therefore, gird up thy loins and arise. And speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Micah, chapter 7. Micah, chapter 7. Come on, fingers. Work with me. Micah, chapter 7. Verses 5 under verse 7. Again, brethren, we knew this was coming. And in knowing that this was coming because we have it written for us, still doesn't take away the sting of it, does it? But we knew. We knew this. Micah chapter 7, verses 5, on to verse 7. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, 
the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. Therefore will I look therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Psalms. Book of Psalms. Psalm number one. Psalm number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Galatians. <clears throat> Galatians, not Ephesians. <clears throat> Chapter 2. Verses 4. On number six. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat, in conference, added nothing to me. Ephesians chapter 6. Brethren, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, not just a piece here, a piece there that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth, 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures. The true and real scriptures. Right here, brethren. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We knew this was coming, brethren. We knew that we were going to see this. And, you know, if I were to ask you personally, if you thought that you would be alive to see what we are seeing today in your lifetime, I doubt there is any single one of you who would honestly say, yeah, I expected to see what we're seeing today in my lifetime. But it is coming. It's, a, it's upon us. And it's coming rapidly. <clears throat> so even though it is, even though we get stung, and that sting hurts, and these stings that we get from the betrayals, from the fact that 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now granted, that doesn't take away the sting of it. And I know that several of my brethren are very hurt right now, and are hurting right now. I know of a, of a beloved sister who um, who is being attacked within her own house by those members of her family. I know the physical ailments that are um, that are basically breaking the brethren and a brother who's constantly being berated in his own house by those who are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We knew this was coming, brethren. And it's important to us to remember that we, we, we knew this was coming. That doesn't take away the sting of it. But we need to remember that we knew it was coming. But what shall we do?
What shall we do? One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Nor sleep, excuse me. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out, thy going out, and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. He shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. This is one of these very impromptu videos that with what I, I had just finished my devotional uh, reading and study of the scripture with our Lord, and um, this was something that he just, hey! I know it hurts. I know it hurts, brethren. I've been through that before, you know. When someone who you thought was a friend, someone who you love very dearly, turns out to be the enemy. And they basically expose themselves, don't they? Like I said, we knew this was coming, but there again, that in knowing that what was coming, that still doesn't take away the sting of it. I know that. I understand that. those of us of the Church of the Living God who are truly saved and born again, how else could you be of the Church of the Living God? Are we prepared? I, I know that no preparation you can make can really prepare you for when someone who you thought was a friend of yours, a brother, nothing can really prepare you for that, for that betrayal, for when you see that, oh my goodness, he's, he's an enemy. And even those who have experienced that on a greater scale, such as Brother Brian, you know, There's a hardness that comes when you experience that and go through that. And that is the one thing, too, that I, um, I want to caution you, brethren, about. To not be so on your guard to where that you become hardened. Too hardened, I should say, from those who are our brothers and sisters. And you know what? You know what else, brethren? Listen, okay, listen. 
You're not going to come up with like a checklist to immediately finger someone as false. It doesn't work like that, okay? It doesn't. There are those out there who are blatantly false that are so obvious. As I'm <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not talking about that. Anyone can say anything. Anyone can pretend to be something that they are not. But see, over time, over time, they always expose themselves. They expose themselves. Over time. Because someone who is pretending, lying, infiltrating to be part of the Church of the Living God cannot keep up that ruse perfectly for an extended period of time. They always slip up. They always slip up. Like I said, having a checklist, observing and inspecting the fruit of people takes time. And, and yes, brethren, sisters, yes, right now time is running out. Yes. Yes. Time is running out. But do be cautious about becoming so hardened that you may inadvertently cast dirt upon someone who is actually of the Church of the Living God. And the Lord rebukes you for it. I'm not talking about people who have recently exposed themselves for what they are. I'm not talking about that. And you, my brothers and sisters, know to what I'm referring. Okay? I'm not talking about that. Okay? By their fruits you shall know them. And right now that takes time that we don't seem to have very much of, does it? But be encouraged, brethren. Our time is ending. And this is their uh, this is their hour and the power of darkness. And amen, brethren, brother. This is just the beginning. From whence cometh our help? Our help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And the spirit of truth, and the Lord is that spirit, he shall guide you into all truth. Pray for one another, brethren. Seek unto the brethren, the sisters. How can I pray for you? Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And brethren, all these fakes are going to be very rapidly exposing themselves for who they are. And our voices are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because this is their hour in the power of darkness. But be of good cheer. Our Lord Jesus Christ, 
our God, our Father, our Comforter, has overcome the world. I, I don't know what you're going to take away with from this little video. I had to do this. And as you can see, I, I am still in my morning attire. <laughs> Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. We knew this was coming. Don't take away the sting, no, but we, we knew this. Love the brethren. Keep your ears open. Gotta go. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.